Hello, everybody. Welcome to Snap Take. I'm Glazer of the Snap Judgments Podcast. And before we go any further, like and sub for the best Marvel Snap Takes every weekday. There's a week left in the Hitmonkey season before we get to the Nebula season. And some of you still need to hit infinite. Our regular listeners, those who hang out in our Discord, can straight up tell you they improve exponentially. Almost all of them, if they're there for more than a season and they stick with the game, they grind it out, they're hitting infinite. Let's talk about how. Let's talk about what decks can get you to infinite. I took a, I did a deep dive into all the data on SnapFan and on Untapped, and I picked out 10 decks, really 11, but sort of 10 decks that will get you to infinite. Before we get there, though, let's start with happy birthday to Snap Judgment's co-host. This is recorded April 25th. It's Roy's birthday podcast still be up again we're not asking him to edit it on his birthday we got bootman on snap judgments it should be out anytime now make sure to keep your eyes open for it in addition we have this giant giveaway we're giving away this says five but we're giving away six nebula season passes and a grand prize that gets those six passes sorry one of those six passes and every single token tuesday for the next season it's a good deal right all you have to do is head over to Twitter, go to at SnapJudgeCast on Twitter, like, subscribe, retweet, and tell us your favorite card coming this season. Now, you want some extra entries, you want a better chance of winning, nice and simple, all you need to do is check the pinned comments. In the pinned comments, there's ways to get extra, there's ways to get extra entries. Sound good? Good. In addition, I just want to start teasing this. We got our boy, Default Dan, the man who runs the SnapFan Open Tournaments, setting us up a scene, a nice background for the rest of these videos. He's the GOAT. You're going to love it. Cool. With all of that out of the way, oops, I lied. Over here on SnapFan, we are SnapFan's official podcast. Our YouTube isn't specifically affiliated, but come on, those are our people. Our boy, Vin, who does the tier list with us, has a meta update for the tier list. We do the tier list a week after the season, so that's in two weeks from uh, yesterday, as you hear this episode. Two weeks from yesterday, we'll have a tier list episode out where we break down after the OTA changes coming this Thursday, next Thursday, after the release of Nebula, where are we? This is Vin's thoughts on what data to use and what decks are important in the meta right now. Y'all good? Good. Let's start with the decks. The first deck is the deck I hit infinite with. Um, our boy Prager, who I turned on Twitter dark mode for. Love you, Prague. Our boy Prager has been kicking butt with this. Our boy Wilkie over on our Discord hit infinite with this exact list. This is the list I played. I think right now I have um, uh, Jeff in for Scorpion. Scorpion's really good. Jeff's ability with Storm is, however, I think just enough better to be in the deck, but this is the basic gist of the deck. It's a nice straight-up Sarah Surfer. It's got a wit great win rate. It's consistent, and what makes it really, really effective for climbing is you can tell when you're ahead. You can tell how you're doing. You know if you have Surfer. You know if you should run. You can see how much power they have. You can add and think about where and how much power to use. Don't automatically play Sarah on five. It's one of the big traps. Very often, you're going to want to drop Goose and a three on five. You still get the same number of threes that way, but sometimes Goose's locking an opponent out of playing a big card in an important location can be more important than a Sarah. In addition, don't be too quick to drop uh, Juggernaut on Storm. That is often the right play, but read your opponent's deck. And if they're playing something smaller on four, it looks like they're going to be playing, for example, a Moon Girl. Perhaps you would like a Storm in Mr. Fantastic with the Surfer buff is, op is very likely to be more and better power for you there. While a juggernaut on that last turn of the game, knocking a big card away, can just win that game. All right, just quickly scrolling down. Hey, look, there's the deck. There's the uh, video I made when I hit infinite with this deck. We scroll down, we see this patch. This deck has been played an awful lot. It's got almost a 55% win rate with a 0.42 cube rate. That 0.42 cube rate is really big. That's not only a high cube rate, that's a high cube rate considering the fact that um, this is such a known deck. People don't play well against this deck. I don't know why. Even when Surfer was hot, people didn't play well against this deck. You got to try it out. 
deck will, as always, be in the description with all of these. Everyone has this deck at Tier 1. Um, this is the version I found over on Untapped. Um, you can see it cut Shang-Chi. It doesn't have a 1,000 games, but it's got a fairly similar win rate across. Note the 59% win rate with a 0.66Q rate. That's crazy. So what's this deck doing? This is your standard Hit Monkey Miracle, right? There's no, like, big surprise, no big secret. Bonkers to me that running Enchantress, there's no Zebu. Um, bonkers to me that we're not running fast. But this deck is just smooth. It's playing a standard game of get the power out early, um, try and get out your Angela, try and get out your Bishop, play cards for power, Enchantress what you need to, and at the end of the game, Sarah, Miracle, Hit Monkey win. Huge win rate. Why no Shang-Chi? What big cards are in the meta right now? We've got Patriot-based decks. Enchantress is better. We've got Zabu and uh, Devil Dinosaur-based decks. Enchantress is better. We've got Sandman decks. Are we always going to hit Sandman with Enchantress? No, but that at least gives us a shot. Enough of the meta right now is ongoing so that Enchantress has replaced Shang in this deck. Everything else is fairly self-explanatory. Uh, the one card I'd like to shout out is Polaris. Polaris is so you don't have to just run when you see Galactus. If you don't see Polaris and they have Galactus and Scarlet Witch doesn't give you a miracle location, just bounce. It's an auto loss. Against everything else, you should be fine. I don't think Galactus is super well placed right now. We'll get to why real, real soon. But this deck is nice and simple. It's got a huge win rate. It's getting played a lot more. I really like this version. Is it my favorite version? Absolutely not. But this list is not just filled with my opinion. It's filled with the things that data says to play. If you want to hit infinite, all I looked at was rank 80 to 100 decks. 80 to 100 decks at high MMR, at high collection level. These are the decks to play. This is the meta cop, as our friend KM Best has said. This is the Sandman deck. This or Galactus was going to make the top 10. I decided on this. So you should be able to tell relatively early by the whether your opponent plays a card such as Bast, whether they play a card that looks like Angela or so on, what to do with this deck. Basically, if it plays those and you can find Sandman, you auto win. You snap before you Electro. Uh, you play Sandman and they run away. You get two cubes every time. If you're running into Patriot, you retreat every time. You'll climb basically two, two to four cubes at a time. You'll lose a cube at a time, and you'll just win games. Is this deck fun? Not to me. Is this deck powerful? Oh, yeah. Um, this deck has a 55 win rate with a 0.3 cube rate. You can see that's the lowest, but because this is the most popular deck in the meta, I felt like it had to be here. Again, it wins enough that you'll get your slow and steady wins. The next and most obvious deck, this is the one everyone's talking about. This is the swing spot. Sometimes this is Cosmo. Sometimes this is She-Hulk. Um, this can be like, sometimes this is America for consistency's sake. Sometimes Moon Girl is, um, instead of being Moon Girl, that is a White Queen. Cool. I like Sarah here, and I also really like this version of Sarah. This version was built, um, I found it right here. Uh, doesn't matter which version. This is the number one deck on like everyone's tier list right now. You can see why it's a 59% win rate, a point freaking seven three, stupid huge cube rate because people don't run nearly enough against it. It's got massive synergies. The deck is super duper powerful. It's super duper cool. It's even got some nice suggestions of card changes. Please don't sleep on this deck. It's got a thousand synergies. Your worst case of Zabu to Mystique and making your four drop super cheap, basically going old old school Zabu is not bad. Your um, Darkhawk with Korg and Rock Slide, not bad. Your potential double Darkhawk or double Devil Dino with Moon Girl, great. Double Shang-Chi wins an occasional game. Sarah gives you an extra way to play all these shenanigans if you don't see that Devil Dino on five. Just lots of really great cards. Um, in addition, the Quinjet works really great with Sentinel. A 1-3 that you can play every turn is awesome. And whatever the heck you get out of Colson and all your Moon Girl things. Super duper synergistic deck. Really strong. Um, but this package doesn't actually need to come together this way. There's several other versions. This is the like extra deck I wanted to showcase. Um, it's right here. 
it is a Darkhawk stature. You can do this exact deck also with Master Mold. I know that's a pool five card with Master Mold and Ronin as well. But this is a nice Darkhawk stature. I fully plan to mess with this just because it looks really cool. It's doing basically the same early game stuff as the other deck, except it's got Enchantress as an extra tech piece. It's got um, Jeff and Nightcrawler to move to give yourself a 1-5 to play with no real other downside. It's got Black Bolt and Stature for a 1-7 play toward the end of the game. Really, really strong, really cool deck. Um, again, Master Molten Ronin worked just as well in this. This version has a <clears throat> low games played, right? But you see this, right? That's a 70% win rate with a 1.15 average cube. It's the dumbest thing in the world, right? Like, there's going to be a deck that's nearly as dumb that we're going to talk about through a lot more games later. But this deck is incredible. If you have access to this, you got to at least try it, right? If you're trying to hit infinite, you got to rock this deck. Um, I promise on one of these videos on the Twitter, I'm going to be talking about this deck again soon. I'm going to give it some run. I want to let you know how it turns out. Cool. This is the deck of the meta right now. This is the Gunny Patriot. Everyone pretends that, like, all their different versions are original, but they're all just the Gunny Patriot with, like, two different cards. Cool. I have my own version. You can check, like, 18 of my videos for it. If you want it, just comment, and I'll read, and I'll drop it to you. But um, I think my version's a good meta breaker. This version's better against some of the current meta. Um, it's got a nice 54% win rate, a nice 0.3 cube rate. Again, this is so known, much like the um, generic ramp deck right here, that it's going to keep its win rate down. I want to be clear. While this deck might be one of the best decks in the meta, part of what makes it so powerful is its tournament play and its lack of bad games in the in tournaments. Are you going to a tournament when you're trying to hit infinite? No. So this falls a little bit. It's not necessarily as good as everything here for climbing on the ladder, but it's still a really, really, really strong deck. It's really worth playing. Oh, I'm just going to go over the quick tech pieces here. Um, you can cut one of the lower cost cards if you need something. Sometimes that becomes like a Cosmo, right? Debris has to be in the goddamn deck because just auto win for Galactus. Free cubes. Super Scroll's job. Excuse me. Super Scroll's job is to ruin all those Devil Dino and um, Darkhawk decks day. It doesn't do a ton against Darkhawk, but if you see a Devil Dino, you see a Ronin, you see any of that nonsense, this card is sweet. Be a little careful not to grab too many lizards and extra careful not to grab any electro, and you're going to be set. Leech is a nice text card. Make sure that they can't last turn or ruin your life, especially with a card like Killmonger. If, you look, if you're reading a Sarah, Leech is a phenomenal last turn play. They can't Killmonger you. Your Ultron wins the game. You think they're going tall, not wide? Abomination wins the game. Pick one, play accordingly, win games. All good? Nice and simple, Gunny Patriot is one of the better decks in the game. It's hyper consistent. If you see Patriot on three, you're reasonably safe snapping most of the time. All right, all right, all right. Discard had to be here. I know I told you last week not to play too much Discard. Uh, a lot of people commented fairly that Discard is really good in lower rank. So if you're like rank 60, you want to get to rank 80, 90, I really strongly urge you to play Discard. It does a like, really good job of climbing to that point. So far, so good. Bad for tournaments, super predictable, they can do the math. 90 to 100, people get real sweaty and might do the math. It makes it hard. This deck added an extra tech feature for that. It's Professor X. That's why I call this Discard X. We scroll on down to the bottom of Discard X. Excuse me. We've got a reasonable number of games here, right? Oops, sorry, excuse me. We've got a reasonable number of games here. We've got sixty, almost 62 win percent with a 0.59 cube rate. No one on Earth expects Professor X on five in discard. And then you're like, hey, but what about Modok? A, you can choose between the two just fine. B, if you have Dracula out, you could always, and Apocalypse in hand, you could always just Modok on six. A five, eight is not a terrible play on six. And then Dracula is just going to win another win with Apocalypse. Um, Professor X is also really strong here. If you don't see that Modok, he can help you win a lane by going on top of either that Morbius or Dracula to ensure a victory. Really, really strong combo here. Um, straight up, Sunspot is really good in this deck, by the way, because this often ends up skipping turns, drawing things in slightly the wrong order and needing it. Very consistent deck. Very easy to win cubes with. A lot of people will be lazy and not do math and give you free victories. All right. Next two decks 
I'm not sold on. Straight up not sold on, but the numbers are. This is, by the numbers, the second best Thanos deck right now. This is Thanos Zoo. What it's trying to do is play the the pool one kazoo game with some lane control. Nice and simple, right? It's got the stones. It's got the blue marble kazar. It's got Goose to slow things down, Spider-Man and Professor X to win a lane, and Valkyrie to turn off big things that aren't ongoings. Nice and simple. If the big thing isn't ongoing, well, She-Hulk and Thanos are there. It's a very, very basic deck, right? Super simple. 50% win rate uh, here, right? Uh, not the case on Untapped. Untapped says this exact deck is winning like stupidly high percentages, like 63% with a good cube rate of like 0.3. Not sold on this deck. This would not be the way I go. But if you watch this channel, you know I'm a Thanos stan. I love Thanos. One of my favorite cards in the game. So I had to include a Thanos deck. Um, the other Thanos deck that's like in tier one and performing great, it's like 0.2% of the meta. So I'm so not convinced. It's got no games here, this version, in this meta. But this deck should look real familiar if you've been playing for a while. Because this is classic Thanos Lockjaw. Like, this is almost freaking exactly like card for card, the original KM best version. Um, It's changed one card. One card. It's still got Lockjaw, right? It changed armor. It replaced armor in exchange for the Quinjet. I might keep armor here. I might decide, eh, screw armor. And instead of armor, play Okoye. I actually really like Okoye in this deck. I find that one extra power on all my one drops really helps. Whatever. One way or the other. There's things to do here, right? This deck's win rate right now is through the roof. It's like 65%. Something silly on untapped. Um, it's winning an absolute ton of games. Cool? We're all good with that. It's winning a ton of games. I don't know how. I don't know how real it is. The sample size is so small. But because this was the meta for a while, and because... Thanos is just real breakable. And because all these cards are powerful, nerf or no nerf, I think that this is worth testing. You know me. You know my feelings on Thanos. I'm going to test this. I'll get back to you soon. Again, here or Twitter, some combination thereof, let you know exactly how this deck feels. We got two more decks. One is a statistical marvel, and one is straight up my opinion. First, the homie Teebs. Teebs has... Uh, what they're calling the dog deck. Um, I'm debating a She-Hulk. The more I play this deck, the more I think I may really want a She-Hulk. But this deck is just crazy strong. Don't know why it feels so much more consistent now. Actually, I kind of do. Because you often end up filling locations, right? And on the last turn, you just need that extra push in a lockjaw lane. Playing Wasp and then dropping uh, America or Magneto or whatever on top of that Wasp for that, like, I'm going to add, suddenly add 25 power in this lane, then there's nothing you can do about it because Wasp pops up something big, and then Magneto just stays there and pulls things over, is phenomenal. Dracula in this deck is phenomenal. Dracula has almost never gotten any... The lowest Dracula has ever hit is a 5. The neck, And, like, it, that's so rare. It's just so rare. You're sitting there with, like, the odds are so in his favor. Is this high rolly? Yes. But part of it being high rolly is, and again, you can see that, like, there's, like, no games with this... Um, I'm rank 114 or 115 right now, and, like, most of my climb is just, like, this deck. I don't know why I'm having fun with it. This is not my style. I'm going to play it into next season. It wins a lot. Is this going to be good against Sandman? Eh, probably not, right? You'd have to get pretty lucky with the Lockjaw before they get their Sandman out, but if you do get that Lockjaw before their Sandman, you can easily overpower whatever they're doing, right? Assuming you get the right card out. You pull a surprise Giganto, a surprise Magneto, a surprise whatever. Then you throw a Jubilee down, yada, yada. You've just got a lot of power in two lanes, and the, and the Zaman deck's job isn't going big. Most things don't go as big as this. Excuse me again, sorry. Everything thinks it goes as big as this. When people think they go as big as this, well, they lose, right? This drops crazy power surprisingly this is a bit of a drunk deck not gonna lie it is however extremely powerful this is the thing unless some other deck takes my breath away that i am most planning on playing at the start of next season to see how it really fares on ladder right now um jeff can just be nightcrawler by the way so this is a straight up without jeff a pool three deck that can get you infinite 
Oh, Teeves was last we talked about 120, 130, something like that with just this deck. Cool. The last deck is the Marvel. I've talked about it in this before. This had a 66 win rate and like a 0.12 cube rate on uh, untapped. And I was like, all right, all right. I'm going to put it over here and see how it does. Oh, 379 games, 60% win rate with a 0.9 cube rate. That's stupid. You recognize that that's stupid, right? Like we've looked at all these deck stats at this point. This is the deck. I've played this deck. This deck is so freaking cool. It's so hard to play around. And hey, this is the most pool five deck you're like ever going to see. But if you can build this, if you can build this and you're having trouble getting to infinite and you're willing to take the time to think about your plays and learn it, it's so hard to play against. I'm going to explain again how to do this deck. First off, it's built around two cards, Quake and Storm. Nice and simple. Your goal is to storm a location. If you can storm Juggernaut, just win a location. You don't usually really need Quake. You want a location. You're perfectly happy to leave that alone. But you could also storm a location and then take over another location. Cool. You storm a location, they're going to try playing a 1,000 cards into it, right? As a general rule, they try and stack up their power there. That's when you Quake. On turn four, you Quake and Jeff, you Quake and Goose, whatever. You ruin their lives. You say... The lane I have cards in now has power, The lane, and I can still get into that storm lane with my Jeff, with my Captain Marvel, with my Doctor Doom, while you are locked out of there. Scarlet Witch seems like she's just to get rid of bad locations. No, no, no. In this deck, she's here to get rid of good locations. You don't want good locations. You want terrible locations because they don't affect you. Goose locks out all their big stuff. Sunspot means you can win a lane that it doesn't look like you have any business winning. They finally get something big down. Shanga Negasonic. Juggernaut says it goes where you goes away, right? On that last turn. So they can't stack power where they need to. She-Hulk can sneak under Goose. Doom can add power across the board, and Captain Marvel goes wherever she wants, especially fun if you've Negasonic'd another lane. So she can just fly in there and land without any concern. This deck is glorious. It's so cool. Again. 230. 149, 379 games is not a small sample size. 60.69% win rate with a 0.92 average cube rate. I don't even know who the, who the heck is playing this deck. It just wins. All right. Those are my 10 decks that you should play to try and get to infinite in the last week of the season. These are high win rate, effective, powerful decks. If I had to choose one for you to play one just one deck to play um i hate to say this but it would be the dark hawk stature i'm aware that that's a pull four card that's a pull four card right if you have and that's a pull five card but not the most important one if you have access to this deck i think that this deck is this deck's win rate it's surprise factor are off the charts i'm gonna go with the numbers at the absence of everything my gut says Teebs. The numbers say Darkhawk stature. Don't have this. Teebs is, again, a largely pull three deck. Gunny Patriot is an all pull three deck. Thanks, coming down Super Scroll. The Sarah Miracle is something you can get with just in one single season pass by. Pull three. There's options here for you to hit infinite. Let's do it. If you need help hitting infinite, if you want help hitting infinite, Message in the comments. Join us on the SnapFan Discord. We have our own corner of it. We got your back. We're going to get you there. As long as you're willing to put the games in, we got you. Have a great day. Hope you enjoyed this Snap Take. And we'll be back tomorrow with a surprisingly different Snap Take. See you then.